the introit of today's Mass. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Let not our enemies exalt over us. From all our distress. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday in the first week of Lent. It's a weekday. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, we pray on the devotion of your people that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, Forty days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in the ashes. Then he had this proclaimed throughout Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles. Neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive and withhold his blazing wrath so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. 
A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. <laughs> for you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise For most Christians, when you mention the story of Jonah, probably the only thing that comes to mind, of course, is the fish. Actually, it was a whale. And uh, that's not the whole point of the story. That's only a little sidebar that's leading into what the story is really about. And Jonah is a reluctant prophet. God has called him to a task. He has told him to go to Nineveh and he's to preach to them and tell them that God is not happy with them and that he means to destroy their city. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. The Assyrians were hated enemies of the Jews. They were the ones who 722 years before the birth of Christ had destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel, the ten northern tribes, and uh, harassed the kingdom of Judah as well in the south, although it would be the Babylonians that would destroy them. And so there is a great reluctance on the part of Jonah to go there. Maybe he feared for his own life, or maybe he was just being very biased and saying, why should God even care about those people at all? And so he flees. But as the story goes, he, the hand of God eventually he has to follow the will of God. And the amazing thing of this story is the Ninevites listen and respond. These are pagans. They fast. They put on sackcloth. They beg God for mercy. And God gives them mercy. There's a great irony that's found here, and I think that's what Jesus is getting at in the gospel. It's why is it the believers 
quote unquote, are the ones who are so reluctant to repent and to seek God out in forgiveness, while the outsiders are the ones who respond so easily. And that's why Jesus says that this generation is an evil generation. They seek a sign. They want superficial signs. They want Jesus to work his magic again, but he won't do it in a crowd of unbelievers. His, his works, his signs are always directly related to the faith of the individual or to the people as well. And perhaps the greatest work or sign St. John uses that word very much in his, in his gospel, the book of signs and in the book of glory. These signs and the greatest of all the signs that Jesus gives us, of course, is the mercy of God. When Jesus offers himself on that cross, suffers and dies for the sins of all people and makes now accessible the mercy of God. We can never take that for granted, and that is the greatest sign of all, is the mercy, the forgiveness, and the love of God. We must never take it for granted. Lent is a time in which we reacquaint ourselves even more with that love of God and his great mercy for us. Our first big step, which is a difficult one, is we have to admit that we are broken in sin. We live in a world that really doesn't believe in personal sin anymore. It might give us and believe in social sin, but it doesn't believe in personal sin. And it's infected the culture and the mindset of many, many, many people, including Catholic Christians as well. The fact that so few people go to confession tells us that. It's a symptom. The mercy of God is there. The sacraments are there because of God's mercy, God's love for us. And that is something of joy that we need to celebrate. And so Lent is a journey in which, once again, we, we see the need for repentance. We see the need for confessing our sins. And then the joy of his mercy the mercy of God. It's infinite. It's there for the taking, but we have to respond to it. So let us not be like the believers of the gospel, but rather be more like the pagans who so freely open their arms to God's love and God's mercy. God spared Nineveh from that destruction God will spare us, too, from destruction if we simply turn to him and believe. In prayer, we bring our cares and concerns and hopes to our loving God. For Pope Francis, and all who teach in the church. May they share the good news of Jesus with all people in a spirit of patience and love. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they respond to the signs of our times with a growing determination to bring peace and justice to the world. Let us pray. For those who are sick, May they feel the abundance of God's loving presence in their hearts through the care of their neighbors. Let us pray. For our parish community, may we embrace the teachings of Jesus with renewed enthusiasm and demonstrate those teachings by the way in which we live. Let us pray. We pray for our parish, we pray in this Lenten time that all, all our parishioners may become closer to Jesus, to that call of holiness, and that we may be announcers of the good news in our evangelization. Let us pray. And for those who have died, especially in this Mass, 
we remember the repose of the soul of Marion Gums and also the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Henry J. Ahrens in 1974 and Father Eugene Kalinsky in 2012, that they may be welcomed into their eternal home with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, accept these prayers that we offer you today, helping to enliven our care for all people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer you, O Lord, what you have given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so may you let them become for us an eternal remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. 
For when he was about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love. We offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the joyful hope, we, as we await the coming, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, thank you. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion anaphon all who take refuge in you shall be glad O Lord and ever cry out their joy and you shall dwell among them
Let us pray. O God, who never cease to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us unending life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Watch over your people, Lord, and in your kindness cleanse them from all sins, for if evil has no dominion over them, no trial can do them harm. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.